plus one. That's awesome. a bit of where, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry for forgetting to record. Thanks for the reminder, David. I think we should, we should plan to record these um, I, and ideally make them public to everyone. Um, I think that that makes sense. It involves a lot of the core design decisions on the protocol um, and was something that we'd kind of, def the JS team was absolutely already doing and the Go team had like agreed to do, but we hadn't really gotten around to doing it super consistently. So I think, um, Alan, thoughts? The, uh, the format of uh, initiatives and talking through the interesting things is way more interesting for people to watch than just quick fire like this is what I would, was doing, this is what I got blocked on, this is what I'm doing next. Uh, so actually having a proper agenda and um, like the, the GUI team are already doing this, obviously. Uh, they are pioneering the way of all of this. Um, uh, and yeah, it's like in terms of having something on YouTube to watch, like, it, like what I think we were doing really well was we were sharing everything we were doing, but in terms of actually making it really interesting to the community, I think that was kind of minimal um, at best, uh, but actually having like this week, we're going to be talking about these things uh, would be kind of really interesting. Um, and maybe we can get towards that with the, the initiatives, um, just make it a bit more interesting. But, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a, a toss up, isn't it, between um, th this being utility for all of us and this being a community tool um, and it's where we want this to fall um, and it would be nice to be like able to to engage the community with this as well but um, I think our primary goal is for this to be utility for us so um, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that but um, just to keep it in mind. Yeah I think to maybe both Michelle's point and, and your point like um, this is not really a meeting where we're going to be like assigning a bunch of action items or, so much. I think it's, this is more of a place to unblock um, action that's happening throughout the project and make sure that the, the next steps have kind of clarity and an, an agreement across kind of protocol design areas. So um, I'd imagine something like, um, for example, there's a proposal from some folks working on package managers who want to, um, I don't know, make make some useful change that's going to make a component of package managers way faster. Um, and they're working on this and they want to make sure that the design that they're approaching um, fits well, like both both for Go and for JS, and that like, kind of like we have a, a top level design and a, a method for doing it that like everyone is on board with and we can kind of hit the ground running and, and have like an MVP that we can get out the door pretty quickly in order to, to see the return on that. And so I'd imagine this call is something where we're like, hey, here is the proposal from this group. Um, they want to do X. This is Y. Here's the feedback. Um, maybe, you know, okay, we can do X, but X plus Y because of this particular thing that someone might not understand across the two different implementations or something like that. Um, are we all agreed that we can move forward on this? Great, cool, awesome initiative um, kind of like is now in implementation state and will stay that way until it's like, okay, we want to actually be merging this. When is the next release? What is the um, kind of metrics we've gotten or the feedback loop we've gotten that we think that we can merge this into the core protocol now? Um, that sort of thing. I'm imagining this more as like a, an iterative planning meeting. And so having these kind of agenda items where we're talking through things that have um, kind of come out of other groups makes a lot of sense and hopefully is, is interesting. And also maybe as a forum that other people from the community can bring things to as well. So say like, um, if someone from the community has a feature of improvement or um, performance improvement or something like that, where they want to get kind of review and feedback and want it to be merged in, we can ask them to come to this meeting and, uh, or they can just come to this meeting organically and we can use this time to like, hopefully unblock that and um, kind of have, have some of that like high bandwidth communication on next steps and direction. Okay, so what I'm hearing is, is well, um, something, something between um, status updates and initiatives, but maybe where the initiatives flex more frequently than they had previously on other teams that did initiatives. So we have kind of more of a, an agenda-based thing where people are bringing things to, to the meeting.
<laughs> that sounds good to me. Uh, I guess the only question I have in my head um, is how to decide the initiatives. Uh, is that going to be like very organic, where people just like it's whatever people um, gravitate towards, uh, or uh, will there be kind of like proposals and uh, and then there's some kind of like a, a routing node that says, okay, I got all the proposals, and this is like the thing that we're going to prioritize on for the next like four weeks or something. I think my perspective is is the other groups who are working on um, on things are doing kind of the prioritization more often of the the chunks to be working on, and this group is more um, kind of routing routing feedback on that and uh, and and making sure those things are are unblocked on the core implementation, less so trying to direct the focus of those conversations um, but but kind of like it's making sure that if if there's something that's really important we're kind of like doing the prioritization of resources to get that thing happening um, if that makes sense so I think like the agenda items coming in should be driven by um, groups groups that need things from the core protocol or things um, that we we have visibility need to be improved so kind of anyone can bring an initiative to the table um, and then the question is like how we how we respond and allocate uh, our time effectively to, to try and help unblock that and make sure it, it moves forward. Does that make sense? Michelle, Michelle gave that something like a plus one. Did you have a, a hand, Michelle? Or I, you covered it in the process of it. And then when David asked this question, I went back to being confused. And then you answered it. And I went, oh, no, OK, that. I got it. I got it. So we're good now. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I do think that the, the challenge for us now is to like, let's get that list of, of initiatives. And I think it mostly comes out of the OKR work that we're hopefully doing now. Um, so like over the course of this week of like the, the chunks of work that we want to be taking on. Um, and a number of those are going to have dependencies on the core protocol improving in significant ways. So like I know that um, there are some specific things on Lytle's mind that he needs to be getting into JSIPFS and, um, and that those would kind of come here if they had any kind of open design questions. Um, or if like he needs a release to get them into, you know, whatever brave browser or something or other, um, that we need to happen and vice versa for like package manager side things. I think I saw a hand from Alan. Uh, yeah. Uh, so mostly agreeing with that, I think. Um, so what I, I think I'm hearing is just the, the initiatives kind of come from one or more, one or more. OKRs from maybe another, or they're roughly aligned with, um, in some way, OKRs from like other other teams and what they're working on. I'm sorry, I'm confused again. Maybe somebody, because I wasn't here before, can tell me what an initiative was or is. I think this word is confusing, me, perhaps, and maybe some of the other new people. I think like if you look at the notes from the Go IPFS calls. Those had a good example of that. I can do it. Well, let me, let me put up a site. And it was an initiative like, we are going to do this task. It was like a way of prioritizing what we should do. Or it was like, let's discuss. This is a design question. Let's talk about it and figure it out. And then someone else will go do it. It's a category of task. So like it's, uh, each initiative is like, uh, improve IPNS like, by implementing this thing. And then like, we'll have a bunch of tasks within that that we'll continue to work on. The distinction here is really like, we have OKRs, or sorry, we have KRs and initiatives. But KRs are things that need to be measurable, initiatives are things that need to be worked on. And KRs should just say, like, by the end of this quarter, we need to like meet these metrics, but they don't prescribe how we should meet those metrics. Initiatives allow us to say, okay, like we're going to work on this. And then in the middle of the quarter, we could theoretically throw away the initiative and replace something else if we find a better way to meet those KRs. That was the distinction, at least from as far as I understand. Got it. And then so that looping back to what Molly said, to me it sounds like this group will no longer necessarily have initiatives, but I might not be understanding that correctly. It sounds, I, what I interpreted was, oh, the task forces will be tracking and implementing the initiatives, like the things that we're doing sort of. And then this group, if we have cross task force stuff that we need to work out or talk about, we talk about that here, but it's not like there's a list of things that this group is actively doing day to day, but I'm not sure if that's correct. I think that's 
that's mostly the picture in my head where like this group is not so much coming up with a set of initiatives and a set of OKRs for the quarter, but it's taking the set of initiatives that are on the core protocols, JS and Go, and making sure that they can successfully move forward in a cross-coordinated way. Um, I think with, with the understanding that some of those will come from like things that people need out of the core protocols, the core implementations, kind of from a project operation standpoint, we need to make sure that we're addressing feedback from some section of our community that, that needs a thing that is not necessarily a package manager thing or a gateway thing um, or some other, or a web browsers thing, but is like a thing that our community needs from the core protocols. And so that would become kind of an initiative brought to this group in order to support our community. Um, make sense? Does that make sense? Alan, it sounds like, does that match with your idea as well? Cool. All right. I think that was really useful. At least my gears turned as well. All right. Um, so we kind of have an idea of how to do those things. Um, my proposal for what we do is next week, we kind of review the OKRs from all of the different groups, which will hopefully be in in the spreadsheet by end of week. And from there, we source a first list of initiatives that we can then walk through um, because, you know, we, or pretty much ask representatives from each group or something, like what are the initiatives that, that need to be tracked over the course of this quarter? Um, and then we can make sure that we have like a list that we're, we're looking at and um, see which ones we want to be talking about um, and kind of prioritize from there. Seem reasonable? All right, um, the other things on our agenda were things like blockers and questions. Um, do, does anyone have any blockers from their async status updates that we should make sure that we run through to get people unblocked on the stuff they're doing right now? Steven? Uh, Goat has tried to cut an RC1 for a patch release to fix a bunch of burning bugs. Uh, unfortunately, all of our infra, as far as I know, is um, running highly patched releases. So I'd like to find some way of testing this without like breaking other things. Uh, but like testing, I mean like trial by fire kind of testing, like actually like testing on infra. Uh, I don't think it'll cause any problems because like we're only pulling in the bare minimum of like critical fixes, but I don't want to release something that hasn't been tested on any infra at all. So I'll need to talk with Michael Burns about that. Is there a thread or something that Michael should check out? Uh, well, there's the release. There's it's linked in the notes. There's the um, uh, release PR. Cool, cool. And our plan for that is um, to start running it on a subset of infra, and then also ping some fo folks in what we're. Iterating on, on the release process as like early the, testers, people who kind of self-select into wanting to help us try out some some of our RCs. Ideally, the issue here is most for infra, as far as I know, is running the stabilized branches to stabilize the DHT, and I don't want to break that. So I don't know where we could run this. Uh, we may be able to run it. I really don't know where actually. So that's why you talk to Infra about this. Let's figure out what the hell to do. Can I just ask a quick, quick question? What, what does testing mean in this sense? Like, could it deploy it and check the graphs and make sure it doesn't explode? Or yes, yeah. I mean, like, you could put it under heavy load uh, and like check allocations, check go routines, check uh, that like we don't get random panics or whatever. Uh, the, the issue here is like our test tests a lot of this, but like especially because it's all running in CI, like we can't run this on beefy machine. It's like most of our regressions lately have been like, well, this works fine on a machine, but then we try to test it in like an actual production machine that has like 20,000 connections and it blows up, so. And when you say deploy, like deploy it to infra, are we talking about this specifically to the gateways and? Um, at least some infra. So like usually what we do is we'll deploy to the gateways and look at that and then we'll try to deploy to bootstrappers, although those in the past were kind of, uh, stuck in an old version. Uh, the problem right now is like these are all running uh, 
a highly patched version of GoPFS that's trying to stabilize the DHT. Um, so I'm concerned that we can't do that. I'm wondering which subset machines we can run that on. Is it, it, so I've previously talked in the, in the past with Aaron and uh, Michael about like siphoning off some traffic onto a separate set of machines. Would that be possible in this? We have that. So at least for a while we had a mirror gateway, which we could use. Um, and yeah, so that we could, we could like, that would help us have some testing where basically what happens like we're not siphoning in this case, we're literally just duplicating the traffic and then blocking all the responses from GoFS. But this still forces us to actually do all of the work, uh, which would give us a good amount of the information. Uh, but it's, yeah, unfortunately that's not running on the bootstrappers. We haven't been running the stuff in the bootstrappers anyways since like 0419 because everything was stuck. Actually, it was before 0419 or 0418, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that would probably be enough, I think, for me. That is all still wired up, so we can turn that back on and we'll sync offline. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Cool. Lytle, you had a blocker, I think. Is that weird? Uh, yeah, so okay. sort, sort of low, low, low key uh, blockers. One is re related to delegated ro routing. Mm -hmm. uh, short story is that the idea is to make uh, JSIPFS running in web browser, being able to discover like peers and uh, basically have de delegated access to DHT queries uh, mm -hmm. by hitting uh, some like, gateway. Right now we have uh, preload mm -hmm. nodes, which basically expose refs endpoint. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference is we want to expose some additional commands on the gateway port. Mm -hmm. That way people can uh, point at some gateway and say, oh, okay, let's use this gateway as a delegated router for those queries. And the problem is we have this configuration option on the gateway API commands. Mm -hmm. It got merged to go IPFS, but unfortunately, it's not wired to anything. I think there's, there's it's still like reps. It's still hard coded. Yeah, the PR got stalled, uh, and now that that PR is out of date, I can't remember why. I thought there was legitimate security concern there. Yeah, uh, I, I linked. If you want to like uh, track back the history, uh, I linked uh, the discussion and I linked the PRs that were like you. closed uh, without merging. I think Lars opened like two PRs with two different approaches, but neither got merged. Uh, so uh, that's, sort of like, uh, that's sort of a block, uh, soft blocker. It's blocking people from running their own delegated router. And also it's blocking our documentation, uh, like telling people that this is a feature because uh, okay. people are not able to configure their own gateway to use that. Our public okay. gateway uh, can act as a delegated router, but it mostly because we do that at the nginx level but we want okay. to go ipfs to be able to do that out of the box okay. uh, and another one is related to apns in base 32 i think we need to bubble up uh, those like multi-codec changes back to go ipfs eventually yes i think that's already uh, maybe not okay Is there an issue or something for that second one? Uh, yep, yep. I I put it in uh, like my notes, uh, async notes, in the Perfect. comments section. And is there some, someone who's a current DRI on that on the GoIPFS side? That's a good question. Like, uh, I'm not sure who has uh, like released the rights to go CID uh, module, which needs to. Already done. Yeah, you, it, that, I think uh, go, IP, go CID needs to be released and then Go IPFS needs to switch to the new version and we are like nearly there. But yeah. And so that enables uh, Baffy peer IDs in IPN, uh, yeah. dot IPNS dot dweb.link, is that right? Not quite, no. This is the first step to enabling them. What is the second step? We, we probably, the second step section, but again. Uh, we probably need to like wire up, ensure gateway is not uh, expecting multi-hash, but it's actually aware that it can be CID. Um, yeah, basically anything that parses a, a multi adder or sorry, a um, uh, IPNS uh, key needs to now actually parse it as a pseudo CID thing, 
well, really, I guess parse it as a CID and then just kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of nasty, but we can do it. Stephen, are you, would you be the DRI on that? Or I don't know who else on Go IPFS. At the moment, yes. Yeah, yeah, at the moment, yes. I'm not even on Go IPFS. I just like to join calls. You're more than welcome, it's Hannah. Nice to have you here. Especially if you have cool updates on um, BitSwap performance stuff. Oh yeah, I do. I do have. Um, I, there's a couple of PRs that are incoming that I'm trying to like vaguely. Well, I mean, I'd done a bunch of work previously, and I'm trying to update them and get them in a finished state before I like officially move over to GraphSync. Um, so there's one in right now, um, and then there's going to be another one coming shortly. And the main goal here is to just uh, increase, I don't know, transfer speed uh, and also reduce duplicates by really tightly tracking peers in a session. So it's just sort of like trying to push sessions to their absolute max capability, which is kind of like once we've done that, we've kind of maxed out what BitSwap can do on its own without a graph sync or something else. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, so we'll see. That's hopefully, that. so there's a PR in right now. I need to, I haven't looked at if there are any follow-ups. There's also a PR in, um, and then there's gonna be another PR. Uh, and then hopefully that'll be it for now uh, with BitSwap. The only other outstanding thing that I'm always talking about is I think we could get some mileage out of error correction in the protocol, which we don't have right now. Um, but unfortunately, that's a decent sized task and I'm not going to really immediately have time to do it. So hopefully, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's what I got. Does anyone else have things that need reviews? Any PRs that are, are open and could use feedback? Alex? So it's not a PR that needs review, but um, I've been trying to push the, uh, like move the async iterator stuff along in JS land. Um, and so I've been trying to do some PRs against lib P2P stuff, because that's the kind of the area that needs the most work at the moment. Uh, and so I've been trying to find like ones that don't have PRs open and then looking at their dependencies and working out which ones need the PRs to trickle that all back up. and. Uh, it's kind of so everything is kind of stuck in this intersection. Is one open, um, and it started off being a uh, a switch to async iterators, and now it's turned into like a general API refactor with async iterators. Um, but nothing much has happened for a few months on it. Um, I'm wondering maybe that was a mistake trying to refactor the API and convert to async iterators. Or like, is it going to be worked on? Or should I pick it up? Or like, what do we need to do to take over the line? Like, would would opening a new PR that just converts the existing API to async iterators be a better way forward? Which would then unblock another bunch of stuff, and then we can go back and look at the API again later. Um, are you talking about the interface connection, right? Yep. Okay. I I intend to get back to it as soon as I'm able to get to a single traitors again, so hopefully next week. And uh, basically it got blocked at the time because of uh, all, almost all the team was uh, with uh, IPFS camp tasks and I didn't have anyone to review stuff. And so I switched to priorities to another uh, PRs and uh, this got blocked by that. But now I think uh, I can continue it. Are you not also working on trying to get the DHT stable in JS IPFS? Like, is it going to take? Is that it going to take time away from that? I don't know. Um, uh, Jacob Jacob was uh, working on the improving the connection management stuff for the DHT, and uh, until now, this is the blocker that we know. So I don't know if I will get pulled to the DHT work or not. I guess I guess one thing is that like if we just convert the existing API instead of trying to do like general improvements as well, it might 
be able to unblock some other work when we could then come back and look at the API. Yes, my, my main problem with that, and uh, that's why I, I tried to merge all together, uh, was uh, to not uh, need two, two breaking changes in like every transport and uh, everything that uh, is built on top of the connections, which is like five, five, or, seven, five or six modules. Yep, I appreciate it will mean two sets of breaking changes. Um, but also, it, like the existing code kind of works um, and we're, you know, it's a known quantity. And so changing, like re-implementing great big chunks of it can introduce new bugs as well. So the whole thing could, could end up spiraling out of control. Yeah, okay. I think that probably could be a good call to start by refactoring it and then improve API afterwards. Um, I can pick that up if you like. I'll submit a PR with it, just convert it to async await. Okay, if you are able to tackle it like soon, it could it would be helpful for me. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Thank you. I am I am unblocked. <laughs> well done. Any anyone else have oh Hugo, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who the hell is that? <laughs> I have an old niche issue on GoIPFS about um, uh, initializing and passing the, the config uh, directly to the IPFS daemon command, which is, let me just, it's in the Zoom chat. Um, we, we, had, we had a little, a little discussion how to do it. Uh, and I had some requirements for the JS part, which I found ways to uh, overcome. So right now, I think the, the only thing I need is actually to be able to pass, it, pass the, the config uh, on the IPFS daemon, which will make this easier on the Go uh, side. Uh, and we, on the JS side, would be really grateful for this because our tests will run like in half of the, of the time. So, if you, uh, if anyone from the Go team can look at it uh, and just make the basic implementation, no merging, no nothing, just being able to pass the com the config on the daemon command, we will be grateful. So, yeah, that looks pretty trivial. Yeah, that's the only thing we need right now. Thanks. Is there anyone other than Stephen on the Go side who might be able to pick this up? Just since Stephen already has like two other things. Dominic, fingers. Thank you. Huzzah. Any other blockers? Or are we ready to move on to questions? All right, David, you already stuck a question in there. Do you want to take a stab? Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, by the way, this is super exciting that we now have our one implementation team and that we get to work more closely. This has been like a long dream. So congrats to everyone. Uh, and for that dream to come really true and I can make sure that it can gels very well. Uh, I I wonder if it would be good to have a structured effort of onboarding the other team into the other team's project. Um, it is true that we both teams are implementing IPFS. Uh, IPFS is a protocol, it's just like different implementations, but like there's definitely nuances and like things that never got written into the spec. So it would be good to have some kind of like onboarding process so that like the GS peeps can like get used to the way that the Go team does things, and then vice versa, because like th th there's learnings to do in both sides. Um, is this something that people would like to consider? Um, would like help getting structured? Like, is it worth, or are uh, is there any equivalent plan to to kind of like help this uh, smooth onboarding process? I see a hand from Steven. Go ahead. I'm not really sure what I would say other than read the thing I'm about to link, uh, which is just a contributing to Godoc. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I think that the release pro or the, the contributing flow is pretty much the same as anywhere else where you make a fork, or sorry, you make a branch, you push the branch, you make a PR, uh, and then you go through the cycle. And if you have a big feature, you make an issue ahead of time, uh, Molly. I think David's point is not the contributing process, but the code base itself. Um, so effectively doing like, previous teams called this a stumble, but like some sort of walkthrough of the code base, um, kind of going section by section or doing kind of an overview of how things actually are and work on each side, um, which gives other language implementations better visibility into how things are actually playing out today. And so you could start having people on the JS side pick up things on the Go side and vice versa, and at least have more understanding of where things are at. Uh, yeah. We should totally do that. That should be recorded and that should be something we give to our own people as well. I don't even know if I know enough to, well, okay. I, I guess we just have to sit down and like plan it and try to like learn the pieces of go this and I still don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, like think about like exactly what Molly said. So think about like doing some pair programming sessions that can be recorded and that like, can even be by subsystem, right? Imagine like having one of the Go core developers with a couple of the JS ones and like just do big swap for one day and then do like whatever is Unix FS and MFS and like where those repos are. Um, and, and, and kind of like just invite to fix some of the problems, some of the issues um, and, and report back on like what was that experience, like what was different, like what was different in JS that was in Go. Um, and, and then do this like for maybe three, four weeks until like everyone just feels super confident of like navigating through the code base and making suggestions. So, so that's, that's not going to happen three to four weeks, um, but I, I, I don't know how, how say, well, like, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say from the BitSwap side, uh, something I'm actually working on with a community contributor is trying to get like BitSwap's, Go BitSwap's architecture more documented. Um, so I feel like if I had like a month to get that into a better place, I'd be in a better place to lead such a, <laughs> like an introduction to BitSwap uh, on the Go side, uh, which would be, which I realize is totally necessary and a good thing to build towards. But, uh, but I actually don't feel, I need a little bit of time to prep, honestly, <laughs> because I need to get that a little more clear on my side. <laughs> yeah, that's, in fact, I think this would be really useful as like a uh, prepared, recorded presentation of like, this is the architecture of each of these components um, that hopefully won't be out of, or outdated too quickly, uh, rather than like, a, hey, let's just sit down and pair program on this because like a lot of these components are pretty complicated. And like, so like if it's, if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, it's great because like, I can like see what someone's thinking and what they're missing and like you can really work it out. But if it's like a, a group thing, I, I feel like a lot of people end up getting lost uh, unless it's like a prepared like, Walk through. Maybe not, but. I guess another way to ask this question is, uh, for example, uh, I guess like we'll put a little bit more uh, emphasis on YPFS, especially this quarter, than necessarily JS, just because like we want to get a, a lot of things out of the door. So, given that uh, question for the JS people here, uh, do you feel super confident and comfortable going all out on big YPFS repos and like just going through the issues and reading the code? In, and like start making contributions, or is there something that you have in your minds that you would like to see first, um, to so that you can prop, you feel more confident? Uh, and this goes for like Pascal, Alan, Alex, uh, Lytle, um, yeah, everyone that's, that has been contributing to Jess. There are definitely parts of the Go code base that, well, I mean, the, the majority of the code base I do not know. Uh, I, I'm, and there are definitely things that I would like to know better. And so maybe if uh, I were to make a list of those things and that would better, um, better inform a session uh, on, on those things. Um, I, uh, I'm still trying to work out if this proposal is is like we all work together every day or if this is just like once a week we get a bunch of people together and someone's going to be the lead for explaining how bits what works in go or like explaining like how 
I don't know, you know, just a different thing in JS or whatever. Um, and, and then we have like lots of people join the call and, and do that. I mean, I think that would be kind of cool. I think, um, yeah, I just trying to figure out what, what it is. And I don't, I'm not, um, I'm not hundred percent sure we know yet. And, and there is a proposal really, but, um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> just thinking out loud. <laughs> Can I clarify, so this is the first time I've heard of the JS IPFS team contributing to Go uh, IPFS this quarter. So I just want to make, so like that, that would, if it, if that is happening, then I feel like I want to do whatever is needed to support that. Um, uh, it's the first, I didn't actually know that was something that was happening. So um, that's the first, I'm sure other folks have already heard about it, but I, that's the first I've heard. I think it's. Or my analysis from kind of Davi's proposal and from getting us all together on a call is like we want to be more familiar. Something that I think has been a blocker for us in the past is um, not having enough cross understanding between these protocols to be able to unblock the work that's happening in one another. And having more visibility would be really useful, especially so that we can have more people able to focus on the important stuff. Sorry, Stephen, I'm going to having people more able to focus on like stuff that's really important as it comes up in on either side. So it just means we have like more flexible humans who can, can jump in on stuff as it's needed. Um, I don't think the proposal is say everyone on JS must work on Go or anything like that because we have stuff that we, um, you know, need to be doing on the JS side for web browsers and stuff like that anyway. Um, but I think having that capability and having a group that is able to be fixing areas of, of Go IPFS, that's a big focus for us, would be really useful. And having people on the Go IPFS side with enough understanding of JS IPFS to um, kind of have that, that visibility and, and be able to own more of the kind of multi-language implementation design, that's, I think, would be really useful. So that, that's kind of where my head's going. Um, and kind of to Alan's point, like, I assumed this would be something like, you know, I could imagine something that David would coordinate um, that would be beauteous would be kind of like, okay, we're going to do a deep dive on bit swap. And we're going to do like one day on go bit swap and one day on, you know, JS bit swap uh, or something like that. Um, and, and kind of like use that opportunity to go through the different things and um, have people who are interested in those subsections learn and also have people who are kind of, um, lead maintainers of those areas do do the pre presentation and walk through the architecture as it exists that was my that was my understanding hand from alan and then hand from yeah so there's some areas where i see this to be really beneficial is for example like the stuff that hugo brought up about the config and changing that that it doesn't feel to me like that's a huge thing to do in in go ipfs but it would be beneficial if like hugo were able to to you know, send a PR to at least get the ball rolling for changing this config, if not do it completely. Um, uh, just to, cause you know, it, it's not, cause, because he's working and focusing on it specifically, being able to kind of also contribute on the other side to, to you know, enable his work um, is, is gonna be probably a, a good thing and, and it would save pulling people off other um, projects to work on this specific thing um, that you know, they're, they're not focusing on. Um, Also, I think a key part here is, is it will be recorded so we can give them to other people who join the team. Uh, right now, like basically every time we onboard someone, we kind of have to like, introduce them to each sub-module independently. Often it involves exploring the sub-module actually figure out what it's currently doing because things change and documentation has been updated, stuff like that. Um, but that's why I think like, I, I don't know if a like, like pair program or anything like that would be that helpful, or say group pair program would be all that helpful, more than like having a, a thought out, well-organized, like presentation effectively on each sub module would be really helpful. And then like independently, we can do like pair, like one-on-one -on -one pair programming on certain things where like, uh, we actually have a, um, a mumble channel that we use Charlie for Go. I'm gonna see if we can open it up to everyone and then like people can like jump on and just like say, hey, like I have this issue in this, or, like I'm trying to figure out the sub module, could you explain pieces to me and stuff like that. Um, sorry, that was chaotic. I also like to suggest as we go through this process, um, 
let's say we start going through like subsystem to subsystem, it would be helpful to like uh, an output from those sessions would be like something to improve um, the spec of each subsystem. That's it. I think something like this could also be super useful to folks kind of on the, the documentation side as well. Um, like this is great for, for the community, for folks who want to be understanding these and onboarding on them more, um, but especially if we're um, also hoping to improve our documentation um, and have, have an effort around that, this will be very good fodder for understanding where maybe our explanation and our disparate documentation sources differ from each other and have a, a kind of a source of truth um, that we can then make sure that everything is consistent with said source of truth, which would be really awesome. Cool. I'm, I'm super pro this idea. I think it sounds great. Um, I think the next step is to um, kind of define at least a, a first set of areas that we think are going to be the highest value and start with those and see how things go. Um, I think having someone who coordinates it, if, if feasible, would be great in terms of like being able to schedule these times and, and um, kind of coordinate DRIs for doing those lead maintainer presentations on subsections. Um, I think Alan mentioned he had some ideas in his head. Daveed, you brought this up. I don't know whether you actually have bandwidth to push on it. Ooh. Yeah, I can help push on it. Uh, I also want to make sure like I'm not adding process, uh, so that's why I covered like, a question up. Um, well, we are starting the quarter. Uh, we want to get at full speed as soon as possible. Uh, this is a new call, so maybe like when we get these pull requests, like just like have a quick uh, async iteration over the pull request, like just like with a few comments, and like people can like put their ideas down. And then like, let's, let's see if people want to have a little bit more structure on this onboarding for the next few weeks. If yes, I'm, I'm more than happy to help like structure that. Uh, if people feel confident just going all out and like starting making a lot of contributions, then let's do it. <laughs> like no, nothing can stop you. Um, the, yeah, like I still think it would be great to have like at some point in the quarter, kind of like the week dedicated to go IPFS and the week dedicated to just IPFS. Um, like on just like solving a bunch of issues very quick. Um, but, but, but yeah. Okay, I, I well, had I missed well, I what your proposal was. What I heard was, hey, we should have like meetings where people walk through these things. And yeah, yeah. You're, you're proposing is actually everyone spend a week on the other thing trying to implement stuff, which- No, no, separate things, separate things. Understanding. Several things. Uh, oh, the, okay. the thing that you understood first is the correct one. Uh, the, the dedicated week to an implementation uh, is something that is on my mind for a very long time. It's not like special support. Okay. Yeah, I would agree that right. if we're going to spend a week on things, I like that idea. I think maybe um, we should chew on that one a little bit more, maybe like create an issue and we can, can discuss like how to do that really effectively and when to fit it in. Because I think the beginning of the quarter is not the best fit so that we can like start working on our, on our OKRs and, and getting stuff done. Um, but I do really like this idea of having kind of a series of walkthroughs um, that are recorded and that are um, like really great learning materials for everyone and are also uh, communication tools for how exactly things work today, um, which is really useful to have a source of truth on that. And I would love it if, if someone would take the action item, the lead on like starting to um, plan out or like create a space where we can talk about what those things should be and schedule them and make sure that lead maintainers are on board with like giving a walkthrough presentation because it as as Stephen and Hannah both mentioned it maybe takes some preparation or some at least chewing over things in your brain of how you want to move through a code base especially when things are complicated and sometimes messy. Can go devs use TypeScript? I think Joke comment, joke comment, I don't know. <laughs> cool. um, so, David, is that also something you wanted to pick up or um, do you want someone else to, to take a stab at those, those series? Uh, again, I, I'm happy to coordinate that. Um... All right, wunderbar, thank you very much.
Do we have any other, are we out of time? Is this meeting over? I think we're out of time. I'm, my time zone is still set to C, C, E, T, C, S, T, whatever the Barcelona time is. So I have no idea what actual time of day it is. Um, the wonders of jet lag. But yeah, I think this meeting is over. Um, and very, very useful. C, E, S, T. Thank you. <laughs> it, I had all of the right letters, just not in the right order. Um, awesome. I think we have a number of action items that we've unblocked. And next week, let's take a pass through at the very beginning of the call, the set of initiatives to kind of define our list. Um, and we'll kind of iterate as we continue going. And hopefully we have a, a wonderful code stumble through um, to look forward to as well. T-E-C-S, TEX, perfect. Okay, cool. Well, thank you all for attending. I will stick this recording up and put it on YouTube's so that other people can see as well. And then I'll see you all next week. Go team. Go on JST. Yeah, should do a collaborative hand. <laughs>